Let us be seated. On a day like this, when we celebrate Christmas, many celebrate but don't know what they are celebrating. But Jesus was born at a time of ignorance. Born at a time of superstition. Born at a time of greed. Born at a time of hatred. Born at a time of hypocrisy. Everything that had to do with darkness. Thick darkness, like the Bible tells us. Cover the world when Jesus was born. So his birth came to work transformation in the lives of people. It came with a new and spiritual turn to the lives of man. It came with a change upon the land. This birth has brought to us on this earth peace to all men. But on whom is favor rests. Peace to all men. But a clause is added. Even to all men. Not actually to all men. But only on whom his favor rests. And that is where we talk about salvation is by grace. And when we talk of grace, we say it's unmerited favor. So this peace is to those who have been saved. And it is open to all anyway. But for as many that come, as many that go to him. As many that reach out to him, even as he has come to this earth, they receive this peace. On a day like this, where so many are celebrating, they celebrate, as I said earlier, not understanding what they celebrate. This is a song we learned, a chorus. Would I call it a chorus now? It has a stanza. So many years ago in the, in the higher institution, it says, Jesus came down. He came down. He came down. Down from heaven. Down from heaven. He came down. He came down. Down from God down from God. Jesus came down. He came down. The Son of God with the love of God to set us free. You and me. I don't know if he has found you. I don't know where you are. But all I know is that Jesus came with the love of God to set us free. You and me. He came down, he came down, down from heaven, down from heaven. He came down, he came down, down from God, down from God. Jesus came down, he came down, thy son of God, with the love of God, go set us free, you and me. I don't know. If he has found you, I don't know where you are, but all I know is that Jesus came with the love of God to set us free, you and me. That is the Christmas. It's the Son of God that came down with the love of God. To set us free, you and me. Let us pray. Father, this calls for celebration. That Jesus, our Lord, your Son, came down from heaven, 
down from you. The Son of God Himself, with your love, knowing that we are in bondage, in thick darkness, in ignorance, living in hypocrisy, to set us free. Father, we thank you for a day like this. You desire that we find you, for you sent him into this world to find us, but you desire that we find him as well. Father, we pray that as this message comes this morning, even with your love from above, set us free in any way we are still here at the whole stage. Confirm our freedom, knowing as many who are free. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. This morning, I want us to look at the message I have titled, which is a question, Who is born to you at Christmas? Who is born to you at Christmas? Who is born to you at Christmas? Many are not able to answer that question. Now, that is why the way they celebrate Christmas is uncalled for. Some, the person born to them as at Christmas is a drunk. That is why they drink and they get drunk. For some, the person born to them at Christmas is a prostitute or is sexually immoral. That is why at Christmas, there is sexual immorality among them. For some, the person born to them at Christmas is a robber, is a thief. That is why at Christmas, those who see Jesus Christ as the person that is born to them as a robber, as a thief, are at the, on the spree during Christmas to rob, even to kill in the course of that. Who is born to you at Christmas? Some, for the one that is born to them at Christmas, is someone who will get money at all costs, even when it means taking the life of somebody. That is why at covens, in courts, circles, many sacrifice human blood to renew their power for wealth. Some renew their power for positions. For these ones, this is the kind of person born to them at Christmas. But we need to ask ourselves this morning, who is born to you at Christmas? The gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 11. St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 11, tells us who actually should be born to us at Christmas? Luke chapter 2, verse 11. If you are there, I read. It says, using the New International Version, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. King James. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. God's word translation. Today your Savior, Christ the Lord, was born in David's city. And I love this by the message, Eugene Peterson. The message. I wish to add verse 10 through to verse 11. How the message renders it. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. That's verse 10. 11. A Savior has just been born in David's town. A Savior who is Messiah and Master. 
Praise the Lord. Who is born to you at Christmas? When you look at this passage, verse 11, the announcement given there by this angel is on the major offices. Office, where you work. The major offices of Jesus Christ. His major offices. And there are three. One, Savior. Two, Lord. And three, Christ. They stand for three offices of Jesus Christ. This is the one that is born to you and I at Christmas. If we understand who he is, this Savior, this Lord, this Christ, we will go about the celebration in a way that is different from the way some of us celebrate it. So the major offices of Jesus Christ as announced here as a Savior, a Deliverer, Lord, the Master, and Christ, the Anointed King. This is the one that is born to us at Christmas. Now looking at Lord, Jesus Christ saves from all forms of evil. Savior. Looking at Jesus Christ rather as Savior. That's the first one, the first office. Because that place tells us that he is Christ the Lord. Today in the town of David, our Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So as Savior, let's look at that. The one that is born to us as, that is our Savior. Jesus Christ saves from all forms of evil. Let's see them. Number one, as First John chapter 1 verse 7 captures for us. He saves us from the power of sin. If you know the one that is born to us on a day like this at Christmas, Christmas being the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, if you know the one that is born on a day like this, understand that he is born to save us from the power of sin. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Not some. All. All. All sin. So if you have received this Jesus that came down with the love of God to set us free, Definitely, one thing it would have set you free from is from sin. Praise the Lord. This is the one born to us on a day like this. From the power of sin. Because right from the garden of Eden, Satan enslaved man in sin. We are going to see later, talking about the seed of the woman. Then we'll be talking about the anointed one in that regard. So that is one thing. He came to save us from sin. Number two, he came to save us from physical danger. He came to save us from physical danger. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, Paul recounting his experience. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That's how that passage is rendered. That this God, this Jesus, you see, and the Lord, he uses the word Lord there, said the Lord, we deliver me from every evil work. Witches and wizards, demons, principalities, as many that want to harm you. Those that go with diabolical means. This is one thing the Lord Jesus has done. His coming today is to save us from physical danger. 
if you know Jesus, if you know Jesus is actually born unto you, you are guaranteed freedom or safety from physical danger. Praise the Lord. Number three, is coming to save us is to save us from the condemnation of the law. Condemnation of the law. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Paul says this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. It is written. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Because if Jesus were not born, he wouldn't have been crucified. Brethren, if Jesus actually is born unto you, as far as the Nigerian law is concerned, you will not go to prison for breaking any law. Somebody listening to me? That you are in Okere prison. You are in Agbo prison. You are in Kuala prison. You are in Kirikiri, wherever. That you committed one crime or the other. You've broken the law of the land. It will never be mentioned. Because when you have the spirit of God, the spirit of God will caution you. It will tell you what is right and you will do it. And that's why when you read to Galatians, talking about the works of the spirit, it ended by saying, against all this, there is no law. No law. No law. So nobody will hold you, even the common Sanitation day that we have. You will obey. The spirit will tell you this is the law of the land. You cannot trespass. You will do what is right. You will give the support to good governance wherever you are. So those that break the law all over the place, they need to ask themselves again whether Jesus is born unto them. Number four. Jesus is born as Savior to save us from God's wrath. From God's wrath. The Bible tells us, looking at Romans chapter 5, verse 9, we are told, much more than then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. When the wrath of God is coming upon the people, like it came on Sodom and Gomorrah, like it came on the Egyptians, his children, his own children, he knew, he knew how to deliver them. And he delivered them. Up to today, when God is angry, looking at the sin of the land, there is a way he delivers. I tell you, for the sin of Nigeria, if not for some righteous few in this country, Nigeria would have been destroyed long ago. Do you believe me? That's the truth. If you go deep into leadership, you see the atrocities being committed there. Those that are into courts, using their powers to oppress people, they are there. Even though they claim to come, they go to church, they bear Christian names, they are under the influence of the devil, sold their souls to the devil. See the corruption all over the world. And then coming to Nigeria. Looking at Transparency International. Rating Nigeria again now. That Nigeria is going worse and worse. As far as corruption is concerned. Even though the government tries to defend it. But even the outrances. The cases and matters. That come up every time. Here and there. Whether the National Assembly. Wherever. Of all sorts of evil when it comes to money that has been looted out of this country somebody with a briefcase carrying millions of naira away nobody knows how much has been cutted away like that and this time the son of a governor and the governor has denied that oh why oh my son is on his own home he has not said it is not true because there's no way he could deny it anymore but the way he could deny now is 
he is on his own. I'm not aware. He's doing it on his own. So he's of age. Ask him. Where did he get all that money? If he didn't have access to government. This is what is happening. But for the blood of Jesus covering his own children. Like God was looking for a few in Sodom and Gomorrah to deliver the line. Just ten. If you only could get ten, he couldn't find. And he destroyed the lands. The wrath of God. The wrath of God. So this is the salvation. So for the salvation, Jesus has wrought for us against the wrath that is to come. Nigeria is saved today. Praise the Lord. And there are some of us also in our families. Because of the husband of the home. Because of the husband of the home. Or because of the wife of the home. Or because of the children of the home. Calamity has not been falling in such homes. For some, it is the wife very loose into the world. Some is the husband very loose into the world. For some, the parents or the children very loose into the world. Whichever way you look at it, it's just the grace of God. And that's what, that's what we call extended grace. And that was exactly what God was looking for in Sodom and Gomorrah. He wanted to extend the grace of the righteous ones to cover the others. He couldn't find. But for that, some families, as I speak now, would have been destroyed. Because when you consider what some members of families are going through, or how deep they are into evil, but because of one righteous one, because of one righteous husband, because of the righteous wife, or because of the righteous children, or child as the case may be, God will say, if I deal with this man, this woman will suffer who is righteous. If I deal with this man, this woman will suffer who is righteous. If I deal with these parents, these children will suffer who are righteous. God delivers. But you must not take God for granted because the day comes and his wrath comes. And when he knows that as it is, yes, I will destroy like he did for Sodom and Gomorrah, he was still able to keep Lot and the others. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Of course, he delivers us as Savior from the power of death. From the power of death. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, it says, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And we are talking about death. We are not talking of physical death. We are talking of spiritual death. Ending up in hellfire. This is what Jesus has wrought for us. And of course, he has saved us from Satan himself. That plunges us into sin. So that we can be condemned eternally. Acts chapter 26 verse 18 tells us. That Jesus is coming to open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. Praise the Lord. We have been delivered from the power of Satan. Can you see why we should celebrate on a day like this? Having been delivered from the power of sin, delivered from physical danger, delivered from condemnation of the Lord, delivered from God's wrath, delivered from the power of death, delivered from Satan's power. Don't you see it? That this Savior that is born to us should be celebrated on a day like this. The second office as Lord. Lord is a sign of Jesus Christ's divinity. When you say divinity, it's Godhead. That is God. When you say Jesus is Lord, that means he is God. <laughs> so we are going to see what we are carrying inside us. We are carrying God inside us. Praise the Lord. And that was the affirmation. Of Thomas who doubted this Jesus when Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to him in John chapter 20 verse 28 says and Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God my Lord and my God so the one that is born unto 
you and I today is Lord and God. God has been born unto us. That is great. That is great. And having been born unto us as God, of course, is the ruler, is the ruler over all and Lord of all. So, whether we accept it or not, to is Lord over all. Is God over all. Whether we accept it or not. The eight things that say there is no God. Whether they like it or not, he is Lord over them. Somebody listen to me. Yes. Those who are in power and they behave as if they are God and they think they have all the authority to exercise over men, oppress, depress, and even kill. Whether they like it or not, Jesus is Lord over them. Because he has the final say. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turns the world around. Jehovah turns the world around. He makes a way. He makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has the final say. In Romans chapter ten verse twelve, it is made clear there. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all. Romans 10, 12. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Is Lord over all. Muslim so is Lord over them. Hare Krishna, Lord over them. Great message, Lord over them. All the courts, witches and wizards so is Lord over over them, over all. Praise the Lord. This is the God. This is God who has been born unto us. Who is the Lord over all. And being Lord over all is a mark of authority. An absolute authority for that matter. As we sang just now, that he has the final say. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, it is made clear there, for I know nothing by myself, Yet am, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. It is he that judges and nobody can question. He, the final authority rests on this Lord, Jesus, who is born unto us. And Jesus is Lord. Jesus as Lord is the basic statement of faith. Somebody listening to me? That Jesus is Lord is the basic statement of faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 tells us that. Which says, Romans 10 verse 9, it says this. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's the basic statement of faith. You say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. It's a basic statement of faith. This is the one that has been born unto us. And of course, as Lord, his Lordship is the basis of our personal relationship. Is the basis of our personal what relationship? Look at Colossians. Colossians, or rather Philippians. Look at Philippians. Philippians chapter three, verse eight. Hear what it says. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the Lord. Of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but dumb. 
that I may win Christ. Paul lost everything for this Jesus. Personal relationship. That because he's Lord, then we can establish a personal relationship. When we say salvation is personal, salvation is personal. If Jesus were not Lord, it wouldn't have been possible. This is the point. Praise the Lord. And lastly, Colossians chapter 2. Looking at verse 6. There it is made clear that Jesus being Lord, that is the basis of our obedience. We can now obey him. Especially as we have seen that he has the final say. He is God himself. Colossians 2 verse 6 says, And ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him. No disobedience. Whatever he says, we do. Brethren, this is the one that has been born unto us. And thirdly, and lastly, the third office as Christ. Christ means anointed one. And the Greek translation of the Hebrew word translated Messiah. So in the New Testament, is Christ. In the Old Testament, is called Messiah. Messiah. So as the Christ, the anointed one, Jesus is the one who fulfills all Old Testament expectations. Do you have some expectations in your life? It will take the Christ to fulfill it. Or it will take the Christ to fulfill them. Can you say amen to that? Because as we are going to see, about eight of them, that he fulfills as the Christ Old Testament. In the Old Testament time, their expectations, they were expecting something. Number one, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, when the Lord talks, the Bible talks of the seed of the woman. It refers to the Christ, the anointed one. The seed of the woman. And we know the story there. After man had fallen, he had sinned. And God had had to banish him from that promised, I mean, from that land that flows with milk and honey. That land, Garden of Eden, where there was peace, relative peace. We are told, God said, well, I won't banish you forever, but I will do something for you. Satan, who is already tormenting you, I will bring the seed of the woman. The seed of the woman will come. And what will the seed of the woman do? He will crush the head of her Satan. Praise the Lord. That's the anointed one. Crush the head of Satan. So that is the person that has been born unto us. The one that can crush the head of her Satan. In Genesis chapter 22 verse 18 is the seed of Abraham. Here it is said that through this seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. This is the Messiah. This is the Christ. It takes him for all nations of the world to be blessed. This is the one that is born unto us. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15, is the prophet like unto Moses. The prophet like unto Moses. You know Moses was receiving instructions from God to the people. The people could not draw close to God. They needed someone to receive from, for them and give to them from God. And so the promise here, the prophet like unto Moses, but that there will be somebody that will be speaking to them the word of God. And that is the Christ. And today, he speaks to each and every one of us. He gives us instructions and we know the right way to follow. That is the one that is born unto us. In Psalm 110 verse 4, is the priest after the order of Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. Psalm 110, as I said, verse 4. The priest after the order of Melchizedek. And when you talk of Melchizedek, is a priest without end. His priesthood without end is forever. 
So this Jesus who is our priest, this Messiah, this anointed one, who is the priest, his priesthood is forever. And even as we speak now, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Praise the Lord. That is the one that is born unto us. In Isaiah chapter 11, when you look at verse 1 and look at verse 10, is the rod out of the stem of Jesse. The Messiah. The rod out of the stem of Jesse. That is the ruler of a world restored to peace, righteousness, and goodness. When you, refer, when you talk about this rod out of the stem of Jesse, it's talking of a world that has gone away. Why? But there has to be restoration. And if this, this world will be restored to peace, to righteousness, and goodness. This is the one we are talking about that is born unto us. But we know that that will be consummated when it comes back the second time. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, he is called the Emmanuel. The virgin son. And what is Emmanuel? God with us. So you can see, the one that is born unto us is God. And it's not with them, whoever them are there. But he is with us. Present with us. So my presence will go with you. And when God is present with you, then the sky, beyond the sky, is your limit. That's the one we celebrate today. In Isaiah chapter 4 verse 2, is the branch of Jehovah. The branch of Jehovah. And when you talk of the branch of Jehovah, it's talking of a branch. You know, a whole tree. There is a big tree. And you cut off a branch. That branch is just part of the tree. So, the whole tree is destroyed. And the branch is left. And so, in theological circles, we talk of remnant. Remnant. The few that are left. After so many evil ones have perished. Just the few righteous ones. So, Jesus, as the branch of Jehovah, is the ruler over the remnant with, with great concern and love. He showed so, con so much concern. If you desire to be righteous, if you des desire to live a holy life, God will be so concerned about you. Somebody listen to me. That's the one that is born unto us. You know? The branch of Jehovah. So when we separate ourselves from this world, as we are not of this world, but only in the world, oh, his concern for us is so much. So lo, I am with you even to the close of the age. Lo, I am with you even unto death. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That is what he says here. And then lastly, is the messenger of the covenant. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. And that's where John the Baptist came to introduce him. He has brought us a new covenant. And that's what we call the New Testament today. And now this new covenant is one that is into a right relationship through him who is Jesus and Lord himself. And today, the devil cannot break that covenant. And it's an everlasting covenant that will continue in blissful state in heaven forever and ever. And then, to tell you why we need to celebrate all this, turn to Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. And that is where we end. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. See what that place says. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Is anybody there? Yeah, read for us. Anybody with microphone, just read. Galatians chapter 2. I want you to come from somewhere. Yes, get, get the microphone. I want it to go around like that. Galatians 2. What, what, what translation? NIV. NIV. Yes, as many translations there are. Galatians 2, 20. NIV, yes. Okay. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live. That's the Christ, so that's the anointed one. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. But Christ lives in me. 
This seed of the woman, this seed of Abraham, this prophet like that is like unto Moses, this priest that is after the order of Medjizah, this rod of the stem of Jesse, this Emmanuel, this branch of Jehovah, the messenger of the covenant. He say in our lives, in us. Is that not great? Born unto us. Yes. The life I live in the body. The life I live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank you. King James. King James. Yes. Fast, fast, fast. That's where we end. I am crucified with Christ. That same Christ. They have not changed the word. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Yet not I. But Christ liveth but in Christ, me. But Christ, that word keeps sounding. Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith by the Son of God. Who loved me. Who loved me. And gave himself for me. And gave himself for me. Thank you. Another version. Any other version? I want to see whether that word, Christ, is changed. Eh? Amplified. Okay. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. In him I have shared his crucifixion. I, with him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live. It is no longer I who lives. But Christ the Messiah. But Christ the who? Messiah. Lives in me. Lives in me. And the life I now live. And the life I now live. In the body I live by faith in the him. The body I live by faith in him. By adherence to and reliance. By what? By adherence. By adherence. To and reliance on. Yes. And complete trust in the Son complete of God. Complete trust in the Son of God. Who Pray. loved me. Who loved me. And gave himself out for me. And gave himself out for me. Thank you. I don't know whether there is any version that used another word instead of Christ. <laughs> is there any version here? I'm looking for it. <laughs> so that we know that this is a corrupt version. Uh, we we'll write here, we we'll set it ablaze. That is it. When they say Xmas, Xmas, eh? X, X does not take the place of Christ. We say Christmas. Somebody listen to me. I saw one card here just now. They were saying season greetings. I said no season. Which season? Christmas greetings. No seasoned greetings. Which season? Very important. This word Christ. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. In me, in me, in me. Jesus is alive in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. That is the great thing. He has been born unto us. He must live inside us. He must live inside us. As he lives inside us, then we know that the one we carry hey, is the one that can crush the head of Satan. If he lives inside us, then we know that the one we carry is the one through whom all the nations of the earth will be blessed. If he lives inside us, then we know that the one we carry is the one that will speak the word of God to us and not the word of Satan. If he lives inside us and we know is the one we carry, then we know that we are carrying the ruler of the world that restores peace, righteousness, and goodness to all. If, we, if he lives inside us and we know is the one we carry, we know that this is God with us. If he lives inside us and we know that this is the one we carry, then we know that he's ruler over the remnant and he's indeed, his concern is very great. His love is 
so much there for us. Whom do you carry? Who is born unto you this Christmas? I have told the organist, I can hear my Savior calling. Because he's calling in a time like this. Say, the, the, this song says, I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take the cross and follow. Follow me. And the chorus says, where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I go with him. With him. All the way. What is your tune? We didn't discuss it. That's the tune. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow. Follow me. Stanza 2 says, I go with him through the garden. I go with him through the garden. I go with him through the garden. I go with him, with him, all the way. I go with him through the garden. I go with him through the garden. I go with him through thy garden. I go with him, with him all the way. Why stands as three? It's talking about judgment. Be ready for judgment. Say, I go with him through the judgment. I go with him through the judgment. I go with him through the judgment. I go with him. With him all the way. I go with him through the judgment. I go with him through the judgment. I go with him through the judgment. I go with him with him. All the way. And the last stanza, stanza 4 says, He will give me grace and glory. Don't you want that? He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. And go with him, with him, all the way. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory he will give me grace and glory and go with him with him all thy way when he leads me I will follow I will follow where he leads me. I will follow. I go with him, with him all.